myself. Hi, y'all. I'm Kelly from The Grant Life. Um, I run a family and fooding blog. Um, you can find me at thegrantlife.com. And this is Marissa. Hi, everybody. This is Marissa. Um, I blog over at Everyday Lounge Act. Um, it's a life and style blog, and it's my proclamation of self-love. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a couple of days ago we started a um, Stumble Upon for Bloggers Facebook group to try and help each other out with stumbling and promoting our blogs. And um, a couple of questions have come up. Some people don't know anything about Stumble Upon, some people know a little bit. But we're going to go over the basics today and try and answer some questions. That way, anyone in the group can watch this video in the future. And. We don't have to keep having video chats to explain the basics. They can just watch this, and we're good to go. So, um, Marissa, what is your first question? Uh, my first question would be, um, kind of like Alexa, to increase someone's page rank, you go to their website, and then you click around. You click to other pages. That increases their their page rank. So with stumble upon, what do you do when you get to someone's website? Do you have to have the the stumble upon toolbar installed so you can, you know, thumbs plus them, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down? Um basically that yeah, that's that's my first question. Okay, so the basically how it works. Yes? Right. Right. Okay. So basically, the best thing to do with StumbleUpon is to set up your account and then install the toolbar. When you set up a new account, they take you directly to the downloads page, which shows you how to download the toolbar. If you don't have the toolbar installed, there are ways around it. You can copy and paste, take it to StumbleUpon, sorry, copy the link of the page you want to stumble, take it to StumbleUpon and add it in directly that way. But obviously, the, the toolbar is going to be the easiest. I'm going to show you a screenshot of my screen with the toolbar installed. So this is Busy Being Jennifer and up here I have the toolbar opened and ready to go. So I have it open on a page that I have not yet stumbled which is my handmade love summer edition. So I'm going to stumble it and add it for the very first time. So you guys can watch how I do that. So you click the thumbs up and then it takes you to a second page for the very first time which is loading slowly because my computer does not love me today. Can you see the second page? Yeah. Okay. So it's my 49th edition. It's your work. One of the things we haven't talked about in the Facebook group yet is selecting an interest is pretty key. Um, if you don't put your page in the right category, it's going to get lost in the shuffle. So because this one is about handmade items and handmade stores, I'm going to put it in the shopping category if I can ever find it. Mm -hmm. You want to give it some tags, so handmade, small bit. Alright, and then a quick comment. So I found out recently that commenting on posts is actually kind of important with StumbleUpon because it builds your StumbleUpon reputation. So that's another thing we haven't talked about yet, but we'll go back and talk about that a little bit um, after I do this. But quick comment here would be... Uh, just tell spell things right, too. Right, and then obviously it's going to be in English and add this page. Add the page. There we go. So then it's going to give me a little message saying that it's complete and I can start stumbling, which we talked about a ratio for stumbling being you want to have at the bare minimum five of everyone else's stuff to one of your own stumble upon will ban people who only do their own stuff so we don't want that to happen 
All right, so I'm taking a screen share off for now. They'll also, with that too, if you keep stumbling the same people stuff, so if it's just me and Jennifer and all I'm doing is stumbling Jennifer's stuff, the same thing will happen. They'll notice that I am in cahoots with Jennifer and that I'm stumbling her stuff and my stuff and that's it and they'll, they'll ban me as well. So I would say for every one person that you know that you're specifically stumbling, that you stumble five others. So Good point. I'll stumble mine and then I'll do five more and then maybe I'll pick somebody from the group and I'll stumble five more and that way it it keeps your ratio um, high. High, yeah. You're you're yourself because you, essentially you're promoting somebody else. You know, if I stumble your stuff, Marissa, I'm promoting you. So you need to keep your your promotions and your actual stumbles, your ratios high. So. Uh, question. <clears throat> I I don't know where I might have seen this, but I thought. It had to be on the Stumble Upon website when I was um, creating my profile. There is a specific numbered ratio, um, like one to every three or something like that. I'm just using that as an example, but if I'm not mistaken, there is a specific ratio where you need to be doing you know, one of yours to every so many of somebody else's in order to avoid that ban from stumble upon. We'll have to go back and look and see if there is a specific number, but the, basically the thing you want to keep in mind is, is it's not just about you and not just oh, about your blogging BFFs or stuff like that. Like, you want to make sure that you're... Um, you're helping everybody. That's kind of the point. You want everyone to be able to discover to discover new things. So, I mean, when I stumble, I get cool things, and I usually end up spending what's supposed to be, you know, five or ten minutes stumbling into twenty, forty, an hour or two because I keep coming across really cool stuff, um, which is kind of the point. That that is the whole point of stumble upon is to be able to find new things, um, discover new pages, new blogs, new whatever your interests are. Um, but did we answer your first question with how that kind of works, Marissa? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm actually pretty. It kind of makes sense. It's it's almost like Twitter. You know, you kind of share, your, yes. you know, what yes. you know, and then the stumbling part of it, you can almost compare to Pinterest. You know, because you're just basically stumbling and stumbling and continuing to find great content, and you know you don't pin it, but you thumbs up. So there's there's quite some similarity there, I think. Yep. And so, the thing I think about stumble upon that I love so much is that a lot of the stuff that you stumble you don't find on Pinterest because it's such right. A, right now it I mean stumble upon it's huge. I don't think a lot of people realize that, but it's it's a huge um, it's social. It's a social media outlet. You know, it's huge, um, and a lot. There's a lot more on there, so I use it to find new content that I can pin to Pinterest that I can share with my readers, and you know, it's a whole new, a whole new market and a whole new set of um, posts and uh, content that you can find. So that's why I like stumble upon. Even just you know, stumbling one of my things, I'll find a whole bunch of other stuff that I can share. So. I mean, I, I, I think it's, and then plus you get tra tons of traffic from it, so, you know, it's one of those win-win type of things. Well, and, I mean, oh, traffic I'm sorry, go of, ahead. Traffic was kind of the initial reason why, you know, I started on StumbleUpon, but I didn't actually realize until recently, StumbleUpon way predates Pinterest. Um, it's been around for a really long time, and it's just not used very much in the blogging world because people aren't aware of it. It kind of faded away with with the introduction of Pinterest, but it's starting to make a comeback, and it's definitely worth taking the time to poke around on, learn the, learn how the system works a little bit. Because yeah, it's good for your um, for your page views and your and to introduce new traffic to your blog, but at the same time, you're going to discover a lot of things that will help inspire 
new posts for f future reference for your own blog. I I can't tell you how many times I've looked at something and been like, huh, that's kind of cool, but I'm going to put my own spin on it and then create new content for my own blog. Or I've learned something that I can add into a new post about blogging or social media or something along those lines. Uh, Jennifer, I was just going to say that um, recently Real Simple have put out this um, article about the symbolism of flowers and their meanings and I actually that was one thing I had stumbled one night I was just clicking through and I came across it and I thought that's something I love you know flowers that kind of thing and I did my I did my own spin on it and I actually posted it on my blog last week um, so I do like stumble upon for that aspect of finding new content and then it gives you a lot of inspiration to think about things and inspire you for your blog. Totally. Totally. And I mean, especially as lifestyle bloggers, because basically all three of us, it boils down to lifestyle um, as far as our blogging niche. But I mean, we are inspired by everything we discover and everything we do in our days and all of that kind of stuff. So I can look at something on stumble upon that will inspire me to crochet a new hat or to write you know a post of, of, about healthy living or something along those lines so we can take everything that we see um, on stumble upon and Pinterest and then funnel it through our own filters and how it applies to our life put our own spin on it and that's how we create content for our lifestyle blogs absolutely Kelly did you have anything you wanted to add no I think I think we've answered the first question. <laughs> Do you have a, another question, Marissa, maybe that we can answer? Um, I don't at this time. Um, as we're going through, I'll think of things. Um, okay. Maybe a good, a good question to anyone else who is going to be seeing the video um, would be how to make the most of it. You know, you know, in terms of Pinterest, the to get the maximum effect out of Pinterest is to have pin-worthy pins. So how do you do that for stumble upon? How do you have how do you get stumble upon worthy content? Kelly, you want to answer that? Sure. Um, I think it's kind of the same thing as Pinterest. I mean, you, you if you've done your own stumbling and you the pages that you stop on are probably the pages, you know, with content that's relevant to you and content that has, you know, beautiful pictures or it helps you in some way. It's it's sort of the same thing as Pinterest, you know, whatever's eye catching is gonna is gonna catch your make you stop on that page a little bit longer. I've also read that um, when you go to a page and you add a review, I don't know if the comments in the reviews are the same thing, Jennifer. Um, when you add a review, that helps the page rank higher and stumble upon so it's stumbled more often in that category. So if Jennifer's shopping page gets 10,000 comments on it, Stumble Upon's going to say, hey, you know, this, this is content that people looking for shopping need to see. So when they stumble and it's one of their frequently stumbled topics, it's going to come up. So, you know, just, it, I would, same thing as Pinterest. The more it's pinned, the more it's commented on, the more it's shared. So if, the more your Stumble Upon post is pinned, commented, and shared, the more likely it is that it's going to get more traffic, more view, all that good stuff is Pinterest. So, I mean, in, this, in a way, it's similar to Pinterest with, with a few aspects. Definitely. I mean, and it's the same with any type of social media, like especially with Facebook. The things that Facebook, Pinterest, and StumbleUpon all have in common is that the more they're viewed, the more people see them, which is kind of silly, but for some reason that's how it works. You know, all these fancy items that they keep coming out with. But the more something is thumbs up on, I didn't say that right, but whatever, thumbs up <laughs> on stumble upon, the more people are going to see them, but when you add in that comment, it takes it to like the next level uh, of stumble upon. So that's actually something I only recently um, came across. One of the other things I've learned recently is that Facebook and stumble upon apparently don't play very nicely. So if you're going to view a post that someone put on Facebook and you want to stumble it, you actually need to copy the link and paste it into your browser, not um, open it directly from StumbleUpon. For whatever reason, that's how it works, which I think is kind of silly, but it's something good to know. Um, 
the other thing I wanted to show you, so I'm going to switch back to screen share, um, is that when you look at your profile page, it shows your likes. So you can see here that somehow my handmade love post ended up in skateboarding. So I need to go back <laughs> and fix that because apparently skateboarding and shopping are very close together and I messed that up. So we'll fix that later. But you can see here that not all of these are my own posts. Like a lot of them are stumble upon or you know I've stumbled them or I've come across things on Facebook and whatnot. One of the things um, someone was asking about earlier was to see how many times something has been stumbled. So if you go to um, a particular stumble and you look at this little I number here, that's going to tell you how many times something has been stumbled. So if you come across something that has like 10,000 little eyes, that means it's been stumbled 10,000 times. You can also look at activity to see how many times, to see who else has liked or stumbled something. Let's see if we can get that. So Connie, Connie, Kim, Taylor, Jessica, Brianna, Kathy all liked this post or stumbled this post uh, either recently or in the past. And um, you can also stumble your likes. So if I click this stumble my like button and my internet decides to like me, it's going to mix up everything I've liked and show me the pages again. So it takes me back to my own blog first, which happens to be my favorite Christmas song, which is kind of weird because it's July, so we're talking about Christmas July, but whatever. So it takes you back to your everything you've liked in the past, and you can stumble those over again. All right, turning off screen share. So commenting is definitely key, um, but, you know, you can give every, you know people you've helped in the past and promoted and different things that you've already liked or stumbled you can give them a second page view through stumble upon just by stumbling through them again and and liking them again and that helps bring things back from the past back into current um, you know because we're always trying to get page views on previous posts and that kind of helps too anything else do we have any questions from the, Kelly, do you remember anything from the Facebook group that people are asking about that we can help answer? Uh, let me take a quick look, but I don't think so. Because it, basically what I think everyone was wondering is the basics of how it works. Yeah, it's pretty much the, the common question. And it always makes me kind of scratch my head because people are always like, I don't get stumble upon it, it's so complicated. And I'm just like, pretty sure it's the easiest way to share any content. Ever. Like it's literally click. Yeah. So it's pretty basic. Hopefully this helps everyone who is having difficulties and questions. Marissa, do you have any other questions? Um, I actually toggled back just now to look at the group. Um, and I noticed you had sent me a link to something between Alexa and Stumble Upon. Do you know if you can have both toolbars um, together? Yes, uh, Alexa and StumbleUpon aren't even remotely related or, you know, do anything for them. Alexa basically boils down to, it just counts page views and links in. Um, if you read that, that link that I sent you, um, you don't really need to pay much attention to Alexa. Some people will ask for your ranking, but it, it really doesn't have any influence on most um, advertisers or anything like that. It's not, it's not anything that a blogger really needs to worry about. It's good for reference because you can help watch yourself, you can watch yourself grow there, but as far as Alexa and StumbleUpon go, they, they have absolutely no interaction. Okay, thanks. My, uh, the only reason I asked, um, Taylor had mentioned something about it, and I remember a few weeks back we had all posted our Alexa um, or just posted our site so we could build everyone's page rank and mine was extremely high I had not even known what Alexa was and now it's down to like a hundred thousand something which is it had dropped from like over a million I was like wow in two weeks 
So I just want to make sure I can have everything that supports me <laughs> so I can support everybody else. <laughs> Absolutely. Alexa, the basics of Alexa is it tracks um, other people who have the Alexa toolbar in. So when they do like Alexa log hops and stuff like that, it's just tracking who has the Alexa page open and um, the bloggers that do that help each other out. So, I mean, it's nice for for just keeping track and watching yourself grow, but the reality is it's not a very realistic number because it only tracks other Alexa people. So they have to have the Alexa toolbar installed to track it, but that's off topic. We're talking about stumble pop, so. <laughs> Thanks, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Ask questions. Everyone, you know, we all want to learn and, and grow and things like that, so that's not a problem at all. Um, I think we are going to make an adjustment to the group that when we do the daily um, post and you post a link, you know, to copy and paste it so it doesn't come from Facebook for whatever reason, they don't play nicely. And, you know, not just to give it a thumbs up, but also to leave a comment because that will definitely help us help each other. So, anything else? Any other questions? We're good? I'm good. All right. I'm going to stop recording now. Bye.